Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about SAG in overhead transmission lines. So you might have seen while passing along the roads, the conductors are being suspended between the two supporting structures, or well, let me say the two transmission towers. So you might have also got it down, why these conductors are suspended between the two transmission towers, because when I, when I was in my school days, I also thought of the same thing, why this suspension is made, because this suspension is increasing the conductor material as well as you can say it is decreasing the ground clearance that is the clearance between the lowest point on the conductor as well as the ground so let us discuss why the suspension is made what is the purpose of it how it will be helpful in the design of the overhead transmission lines so if i define sag your sag is nothing but the level difference it is nothing but the level difference between the support point and the lowest point on the conductor so let me say these are the two transmission towers and uh, the support point here it is A and the support point here it is B and the lowest point on the conductor is O. So the level difference between the support point and the lowest point is defined as the SAG. So during the erection of the towers, the transmission conductors are suspended between the two transmission towers. Now the connection of the conductors between the two transmission towers can be done tightly or they can be done loosely. Now, when the connection of the conductor between the two transmission towers is done tightly, so when there is a tight connection, uh, let me say this is a AOB is the conductor and when the conductor is tightly connected, let me say uh, the conductor is in this fashion, so when the conductor is in this fashion, you can see you you can able to save the conductor material so you are you are saving the conductor material as well as you are avoiding the extra height of towers so extra height of towers ensuring the ground clearance that is the distance between the lowest point of the conductor and on the ground so extra height of towers can be avoided but the disadvantage is the tension increases so let us understand what is this tension. So let me say there is a person A here and there is a person B here. So these both fellows are pulling a rope in between them towards them. So this fellow is pulling the thread towards him and this fellow is pulling the thread towards him. Now when both the persons are pulling the threads towards them, a pulling force is exerted on the thread. That pulling force, that pulling force is your tension. Now, the tensile strength, there is other term here, the tensile strength. The tensile strength is the measurement of force required to pull something to a certain extent where a breakdown occurs. So, the tensile strength is a measurement of force required to pull something to a certain point where a breakdown can occur. So, when the conductors are tightly connected, you can save the conductor material, this is the advantage, and you can avoid the extra height of towers, ensuring the ground clearance, this is the advantage, but the disadvantage is tension. So, the tension increases. Now, when the tension increases, the tension strength and the tension are interconnect, uh, used interconnectedly. So, as the tension strength increases, there will be a certain point where the breakdown can occur. So, the conductor may be detached from the support points so that a breakdown can occur. Now, when the conductor is loosely connected, when the conductor is loosely connected, you can have less value of tension, less tension will be there so that you can avoid the breakdown. So, breaking point can be avoided when you connect the, when you connect the conductors loosely between the two transmission towers. But when you connect closely, there will be a disadvantage of, let me say, this is the ground. So when you connect the conductor loosely, the sag value increases. So this, as the sag value increases, the ground clearance, ground clearance decreases, ground clearance decreases. And other thing is, the conductor material increases. So these are the two connections, so each is having its own advantage and disadvantage. Therefore, a compromise is made 
between the two connections and you have to ensure a perfect value of sag. So perfect value of sag must be ensured so that you can have enough tension that is enough tension means less tension will be there there, will, there should be less tension and uh, you have to save the conductor material as well as you have to avoid the extra height of towers therefore minimum or you can say the perfect value of sag must be ensured so that all the three things can be met but we have seen when they are connected tightly advantages when they are connected loosely the advantages as well as the disadvantages so we have to ensure the perfect value of sag so here AOV is a conductor suspended between the two support points AB so let us draw some inferences from this diagram so the first inference is first inference is when the load is assumed to be distributed along the center of the conductor so along the center line of conductor when the load is assumed to be distri distributed uniformly then the conductor hangs in a curve called catenary the conductor hangs in a curve catenary when the load is assumed to be uniformly distributed along the center of the conductor along the center line of conductor then you can say catenary and when the load is assumed to be distributed uniformly along the horizontal along the horizontal then the conductor hangs in a curve called parabolic it hangs in a curve called parabolic and for greater spans or for more span let me say span length so uh, if i define the span length the span length is the horizontal distance between the two support points so this is your span length now when the span length is greater than 1000 feet you have to take the calculation by considering this curve as a catenary because the catenary curve will result a accuracy so the result will give more accuracy when you consider the span length of greater than 1000 feet as a catenary curve now below this 1000 feet you can consider it as a parabolic so that you can have the easy calculations and uh, you can see one foot one foot will be equal to 30.48 centimeter so 1000 feet is uh, you can see 30480 centimeter so this will be equal to 304.80 meters so generally for the hv transmission lines the span length is between 120 meter to 160 meter so for greater than 304 meter span length you can assume the curve to be a catenary and for below this span length you can assume the curve to be parabolic because for greater span length that is span length greater than 1000 feet it gave more accurate results considering the curve to be a catenary now the second inference is the tension at any point the tension at any point acting on the conductor will be always tangential so there will be the tangential tension acting at any point on the conductor and at the lowest point on the conductor there will be only the horizontal component of tension there will be only horizontal component of tension and, and at any point on the conductor there will be uh, the horizontal component of tension as well as the work, vertical component of tension because at the lowest point on the conductor you are not having any uh, more surface of conductor below it so you are not having any vertical component of tension here and the third inference is the tension at the support points A and B will be approximately equal to the tension at any point on the conductor so this is the third inference and the fourth inference is the horizontal component of tension will be constant along the entire line length so the horizontal component of tension will be constant along the entire line length so these are the four inferences you can draw from the uh, conductor hanging in a curve called catenary or you can call it as parabolic so you shall consider the factors factors affecting the sag so first factor is weight now 
the as the weight of the conductor increases the sag value increases because as the weight increases the force acting vertically downwards increases so this increases the sag value so you can say your sag s is proportional to the weight and the second thing is location of conductor so suppose if we are having the conductor in an area where the ice formation takes place due to the accumulation of ice around it so you can consider the areas in the, the northern uh, plains like canada uh, alaska and in the russian areas so there will be more uh, snowfall fog froze then there will be the accumulation of ice around the conductor and in such areas the weight of the conductor increases due to the accumulation of ice around the conductor so it depends on the location of the ice also so the location of sorry the location of conductor also affects the sag value and the third thing is because as the accumulation of ice takes place the weight increases you now as the weight increases the sag also increases the third thing is span length now the span length the more the span length more will be the sag value so this is the span length that is horizontal distance between the point a and b so more the span length more will be the sag value so the relation here it is sag is proportional to the square of the span length so it is proportional to the square of the span length and you can see here the curve is assumed to be catenary the curve is assumed to be catenary when you are having the span length greater than the 1000 feet now when the span length is greater than 1000 feet you can assume the curve to be catenary as it gives more accurate results so as the span length is more that means for more values of sag your curve will be catenary and for less values of sag your curve will be parabolic so this is the inference you can draw from this sag is proportional to the span length square and the fourth factor is the temperature now as the temperature increases the conductor expands now as the conductor expands the sag value increases now when the temperature decreases the conductor contracts and when the conductor contracts the sag value decreases so in this way you can relate the sag is proportional to the temperature and the fifth factor is the tensile strength so tensile strength is nothing but the measurement of force we have discussed it earlier so the tensile strength will be inversely proportional to the sag so more will be the tensile strength less will be the sag and vice versa and the sixth factor is tension so your tension is also inversely proportional to the sag value now the calculation of sag can be made on two conditions so one condition you can say is the support points at equal levels so the support point at equal levels and the other condition you can say the support point at unequal levels support point at unequal levels so i think this video might go lengthy but uh, be patient and listen to the video because this is a very important topic in power system so let us here first consider the two supports at equal levels so this is a diagram for the two support at equal levels so you can see the two support points a and b o is the lowest point on the conductor where t is the tension acting at the lowest point on the conductor and we are considering a certain point p now the p on the conductor has coordinates x and y so if you if you see this is o is the origin so here the lowest point o is the origin and there is a certain point p here and this is having the coordinates x comma y then this distance is your x and this distance is y so similarly you can see here x is this distance y is this distance and uh, at the middle of this distance x by 2 x by 2 and uh, the force acting at the middle of this horizontal distance that is at the x by 2 is w into x where w is the weight of the conductor per unit length so here you might have seen in the physics the torque equation so the torque equation is given by r cross f so this can be written as rf sin theta so r is a position vector f is a force acting so you can see here tension is a force here there are two forces this is one force and this is the other force so this is f1 let me say this is f2 so there are two force acting uh, and y is the position vector here for tension t and uh, x by 2 is the position vector for the uh, force wx so by equating the two moment of force here we will be having t into y will be equal to wx into x by 2 
So W x into x by 2. Now from here you can write y is equal to W x square by 2t. Now if I consider this y for a maximum uh, sag that is the sag is a, there is a level difference from the support point to the lowest point on the conductor. So by replacing y with the sag value s and uh, consider this x to be the distance l by 2. So here let me say this is the span length, the span length is l and at the middle uh, I am breaking the span length so you are having this is l by 2 and this is l by 2. So by considering your x is equal to l by 2 you will be having the sag value as s is equal to w into l square by 80. So this is the sag value for the support points at equal levels. Now consider the support points at unequal levels. So in the hilly terrains where there is a slope of the hills you will be having the towers at different levels. So you can see here this is a point A and this is a point B and the level difference between the point B and A is given by H. S1 is a sag here and S2 is the sag here and the span length is again L and uh, at the lowest point on the connector so I am saying this is the lowest point on the connector let me say O so the horizontal distance from O to support structure A is X1 the horizontal distance from O to support structure B is X2 and this is the total span length now here you can see your S1 can be given by your S1 can be given by W into X1 square by 2T just like here you have considered this as X so we have assumed here X is equal to L by 2 so just like this equation, we have for the support point A, this for support point A, S1 is equal to W into X1 square by 2T for now support point B, your sag value, this sag value S2 will be equal to W into X2 square by 2T. So these are the two sag values. Now, what I can do here is I will multi, uh, subtract S2 minus S1. So I will do this S2 minus S1 will give you W by 2t if you can take comma and uh, this will be X2 square minus X1 square. So this can be written as W by 2t this is the basic mathematics you all know. So X1 plus X2 into X2 minus X1. So this is S2 minus S1 where S2 minus S1, so this is the S2 and this is S1 and uh, if you subtract S1 from S2 you will get the height H. So this is, this can be given by H and this is W by 2T into, so here you can see X1 plus X2 is equal to L. So this is your L into X2 minus X1. So from here you can see X2 minus X1 can be given by 2t 2th by wn so this is x2 minus x1 so i am having the other equation as x2 plus x1 is equal to l so these are the two equations where we are having the two unknowns x1 and x2 are the unknown so from these two equation you can uh, uh, find the x2 and x1 so x2 can be given by from here uh, if you add this so this will get cancelled 2x2 will be equal to L plus 2th by WL. So x2 can be given by L by 2 plus th by WL and your x1 can be given by L by 2 minus th by WL. So this is the value of x2 and x1. Now when you plug these values here you will get the sag at the point A and when you plug this value here that means uh, this is x1 and x2 values in these respective equations you will get sag1 and sag2 for the unequal levels now here the weight is the weight of a conductor is a self weight we are uh, not uh, we are not considering the effect of ice loading or the wind pressure this this weight is a conductor self weight per unit length now let us see what is the effect of the uh, wind pressure and the ice loading on the sag value calculation as well as the temperature. So earlier in the factors affecting sag we have seen that the ice 
formation takes place and where the ice gets accumulated there the weight of conductor increases now as the force is acting vertically downwards the weight of conductor increases and the sag value increases so by considering the effect of ice loading we shall see how the sag value changes and we shall also consider the wind pressure so let me say wi is the weight of ice per unit length so w is the weight of ice per unit length and we know that density is given by mass upon volume and your mass can be given by density into volume so here by considering my mass as a weight actually both are different mass and weight are different but here uh, this mass i am considering as a weight so weight of the ice can be given by density of the ice into the volume of ice per unit length volume of ice per unit length so let me say uh, this is your conductor which is having a diameter d this is a conductor having a diameter d and this thickness is your ice coating thickness and i will represent it with t so this is ice coating thickness and this green color is your conductor but this is the accumulation of ice around the conductor so here your wi can be given by density of ice into volume volume is nothing but area into thickness so to to know the area of this ice coating around the conductor what we can do is i'll consider the total diameter that is d plus 2t and i'll subtract the diameter of the conductor so in this way i'll have this is d plus this is d plus 2t that is uh, what we say area area can be given by pi by 4 t square so here uh, i will write pi by 4 into d plus 2t square minus d square into the thickness of ice so here i am considering the thickness of ice as 1 so 1 is a Uh, thickness of ice, but here the coating of ice is ice thickness is t. Do not confuse. Here the thickness of ice I have considered, and here is the coating of ice. The coating thickness is t, and the thickness of ice is one. So from here you can write density of ice into if you expand this pi by four into your d square d square will cancel, and you will be left with four d t plus four t square. into 1 so this will be density of ice into so 4 4 get cancel and uh, if i take t common this will be pi t into d plus sorry 4 gets cancel and uh, this will be d plus t so this is the weight of ice now there will be a wind pressure acting on this conductor so here the conductors diameter is d plus 2t d plus 2t because there is there is already a ice accumulation around the conductor and now there will be a wind force acting perpendicular to the surface area so this is how the wind force is acting and we know that the pressure is nothing but the force exerted per unit area so you know pressure is the force exerted per unit area now in order to find the wind force per unit length i'll write force is nothing but the pressure per unit area that is uh, the pressure per unit length into projected area per unit length so this will be pressure per unit length into projected area per unit length and uh, and this can be written as p into the area area is the projected area per unit length this is a projected area so you can see this is the projected area and this area is not the complete area of the conductor it is just the projected area per unit length so you can see this is the projected area and uh, uh, if i represent it like this so this will be your d plus 2t and this is your thickness is 1 so or you can say the breadth is 1 so this is the area area is given by d plus 2t into 1 this is the projected area per unit length and not the complete area of the conductor so remember this this is d plus d plus 2t into 1 so this is the 
wind force and this is the uh, this is a wind force per unit length w w w is the weight of ice per unit length so you can see here your uh, w w is acting horizontally and uh, your ice is acting vertically downwards and uh, whereas you are also having the weight of the conductor that is a self weight of conductor per unit length now you can represent this in this fashion so let me say this is the w w and uh, this is your w plus w i and uh, your resultant weight will make an angle theta with the vertical so this is your resultant weight per unit length and this resultant weight is the vector sum of these two weights so it can be given by your w t can be given by the vector sum of these two weights that is w plus w i whole square plus w w square so this is the resultant weight and uh, the vertical sag so the vertical sag here can be found by s v so this is the vertical sag can be found by s into cos theta and your s is nothing but w x square by 2t so in this way you can find the vertical sag by taking the effect of the wind force and the weight of ice so this is all about the sag calculation of the overhead transmission lines i hope you understood well please subscribe to our channel thank you